I think we'll consider this a blog, effortless blog um, video. Yeah. Um, I think I'll try to do one of these a week. Yeah, just make at least one a week. Um, so, yeah, Jay's added some more stuff. He did a little writing on the trapdoor thing, and very good. <laughs> yeah, he actually looked it up in Wikipedia or whatever. Um, but anyway, just the idea of the, you know, I never went into it in detail, but it's just the idea of a game called Trapdoor, you know, that we're living this, this game, uh, that we are, that we don't sign up for, that we don't give our consent to play. Um, and yeah, as long as we're lucky and we don't fall in the trapdoors, <clears throat> um, it's kind of easy to say, um, yeah, it's no big deal, but it's a huge deal, okay? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you draw the short straw, um, and a lot of the st short straw drawers, we never hear from them, you know, because they die in the war, or they die of the disease, or they die of the getting hit by a bus, you know, on their 16th birthday. Um, you know, the the, the 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 crap we never hear the from from the we never hear the testimony from those people. Um, but anyway, um, so anyway, he did, did a good job. Um, so yeah, more to add, more to do people should contribute and all that stuff so anyway I guess the obviously another one of these titles will have to deal with the red button issue because it's come up again um, and uh, so there's a couple of posts uh, with Feta and um, yeah, even Samari added a comment to the video um, you know and uh, yeah so the Feta makes this comparison between well you know, I, could, I guess I could read his comment <laughs> you know, it was sort of annoying. Um, maybe I'll read the second paragraph first. A and an ethelism are not the same thing, not even contingent. You could be one without being the other. The same applies to feminism and rad feminism, which is just, you know, for example, which is just so, um, I don't know, straw man, much kind of a comparison. And um, even the premise that I somehow, you know, like radical feminism, you know, everything radical, everything to the extreme is always wrong or something. Um, no, that's not necessarily true anyway. Um, but not all ANs are ethelists and vice versa. Well, I don't know how you could be an ethelist and not be an antinatalist. Uh, how, exactly how would that work? Uh, uh, who, who's who? Being that I coined the phrase ethelist, I guess I should know if there is such a thing as an ethelist who's not an antinatalist. Um, because I don't think there's such a thing. So vice versa doesn't really work there. Uh, you know, the, 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 the point of the distinction is to say, yeah, these pussies will get nothing done. Okay, antinatalism by perfect... No, that's like, I'm, I'm anti-rapist. That means I don't rape. But I think other people should have the freedom to rape. Fuck that! <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Um, if I if I think it's nailing is wrong, then it's wrong. It's not wrong under certain circumstances or under these conditions. You know, if you do the rape right, it's okay. If it's date rape, it's okay. Well, what's the standard here? Um, and that's the whole point: is that it's it's anti-natalist by these pussy anti-natalist standards isn't even anti-natalism. It's it's some other kind of crap. Doesn't have anything to do with the Benatar standard anyway, or even Schopenhauer. Um, it's it's just a it's a pussy antinatalism. Doesn't have anything to do with the anti word. Just has to do with the word un. You just call yourself unnatalists because you're not anti-natalism. You're unnataling. Big difference, <laughs> you know. Um, I, you know, it's either you think it's a crime or you don't think it's a crime. Either you think it's wrong or you don't think it's wrong. It's just bullshit to sit there and say, well, I, I guess there, there is a, another third middle ground where you could say um, um, it's naughty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, to take it completely unseriously. Say, go ahead. Um, do, do what is the most important, critically dangerous, and destructive thing possible. Open the Benatar door to the harm that doesn't need to exist. Create the problem. Be Dr. Frankenstein. And that's the scenario I'm going to bring this back down to. Is I think the Dr. Frankenstein analogy works. Alright? I mean, antinatalists do not breed antinatalists. Alright? We're bred by natalists. That's the catch here. 
All right, Frankenstein monsters do not make Frankensteins. Dr. Frankenstein makes Frankensteins. And that's the problem here, is you have to go back to the first imposition. All right, and the first imposition, by terms of a social contract, the first violation is the non-consensual imposition of life. All right, if you're not going to satisfy your obligation to completely brainwash your child to be just as dumb as you and to fall for your fairy tales and your delusions of accomplishment or grandeur or God, if you're not going to have one of those beauty in the universe bullshit or some other kind of nonsense that you're going to indoctrinate your child with and guarantee that you're going to so break their brain that they won't be able to have a cogent thought and figure out, oh yeah, that's right, DNA. DNA, it's a replicating molecule. It's gladiator wars for four billion years, 500 million of which the animals could, could, could bleed pain, um, not just fluid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't undo these, these, these facts with this mush. So anyway, it's good video, Jay, but I wouldn't push the red button. That means, that, that doesn't mean I don't think the... <clears throat> that the end of the mechanism would be a good thing, which will come, by the way. Yeah, it will come when and how. You know, I, I mean, that's just, to, you know, to say, okay, well, eventually there'll be a war to end all wars. <laughs> yeah, well, eventually. Uh, yeah, and who has to fight in it? So, so take the worst case scenario that we've already lived through and double it or magnify it by a hundred or, or a thousand and say, yeah, we should just sit back and let that happen. Let it happen that way, because oh yeah, it'll eventually crash. So let's just let's just let it crash any old frickin' way. <laughs> let's do nothing to minimize the mess. Uh, but imposing death is wrong for the same reason that imposing life is. Well, there you can see you're backwards here. Um, the the decision to impose life is the first imposition crime. You obviously can't impose death until somebody else imposes the life. Um, so in a sense, you're wrong, because the, the first crime, the bigger crime, is this crime. And if somebody's going to commit this crime, uh, this crime is acceptable as a response to somebody threatening that crime. Yeah. I mean, you know, the word life is irrelevant. It's the, the word imposing is the key word, right? See, this life, well, this word, imposing. This is the, the key word, um, and it's the first crime is where you have to go. That's the one that needs to be stopped. That's the one that you can legitimately stop. Um, certainly it has more legitimacy to stopping that one and using any means necessary. Um, well, any means, is a, that's, that's saying it the wrong way. Um, but whatever means are required. Maybe a better way to say it. Um, okay, so here's, here we go again. Um, this, this is the comment on Jay's most recent video. I'm sorry, Jay, the arguments presented here are not solid enough for my brain. Imposition doesn't change it. It's ethical wrongness because an individual th thinks he's got it right and the others have got it wrong are, are stupid. You put that in quotes, are stupid. Well, well, doesn't that standard have to be that there has to be some reasonable doubt, some sort of reasonable alternative explanation? So you're saying that there's some reasonable hope that it's not a DNA molecule that instigated life on Earth, that one molecule four billion years ago um, through merely a stupid, dumb chemical process um, created a replicating cellular device that could repro reproduce itself. Um, and that through four billion years of idiotic and moronic carnage war, um, these devices acquired these tools. And that there's, this is an unre that there's some reasonable doubt about that truth, that there's some reasonable alternative explanation for our existence besides that truth. Because that, if, that, if that simple definition of our reality is true, the Benatar scenario is true, and, and all these people are doing is opening the door to harm. That's it. And the only way to stop the harm, the only way to do the fail-safe thing, 
and fail safe becomes important here because that's that's where you start from <laughs> you say you can't you go let's go back let's unclean up the mess and let's start over and now say you can only do something when you can ensure yourself against the harm that should be the expectation so unless you have a plan to ensure yourself against the imposition of harm the imposition of torture essentially I mean, go to a, you know, well, you can go to a mental institution, but you can even just look at pictures of, of people in mental institutions from 1950. Type in 1950 mental institution <laughs> into Google, and maybe you can find some nice photographs of horror, absolute horror. You know, and people talk about waterboarding and torture and all this other stuff. Well, you know, go look in those faces, and you'll see torture. We're torturing people. We're torturing sentient beings because reckless assholes have decided they're going to be creators. They're going to play God. And you're saying we don't have a right to stop the God players. Well, I'm saying of course we do. The fact that they are reproductive is the same reason why a fish is reproductive or a frog is reproductive or, or an AIDS virus is reproductive. <laughs> There's no magic here. There's no earning it. There's no qualifications. So if they're going to use that thing, they're going to have to use it responsibly because we're smart enough to know what the difference is between responsible and irresponsible use. And there is no responsible use. That's the simple truth. There's no reasonable explanation of a responsible use of reproductivity. It's only a selfish use and it only has imposition um, threat. That's all it is. It's a huge imposing threat. Uh, okay. Um, specifically with um, creating, taking other people's lives. Um, well, again, people, you know, taking a life is this is another, you know, you're not, you know, everybody dies. So all you're taking is time, if anything, from people. So, you know, the, the verbiage should probably be a little more accurate um, because you're not taking somebody's life. You're taking maybe their, some days, some future, um, but uh, again, it's no, nobody has the right to have their future at somebody else's expense. And by denying them their future, I'm denying the creation of their victims. And that's important. So you either believe that it's right to torture people or you don't believe it's right. If you believe it's wrong to commit torture for some positive gain that you could extract through torture, um, you either believe it's right or wrong. So I believe that's ethically not right. You can't, you can't impose torture on something else to justify anything you're going to do. Okay, it just doesn't matter unless you're going to prevent the torture of a hundred more other people. So unless you're going to prevent more torture by committing torture, you have no justification in imposing torture. And that's what this system does. It imposes torture on non-consensual consciousnesses. Also, I don't see what is so difficult to understand about my statement that A.N. and Ethelism are not the same thing. Um, yeah, again, I'm, I made the distinction because, yes, if you're an A.N., uh, you know, by this, this stolen definition, people have just stolen the word. They've basically stolen the word, right? Benatar made it clear in his book um, that he would probably apply all of the standards he talked about to all sentient life. But he wrote a book about human beings. Um, but it was clear that he understood that this extends beyond um, the human condition. And it's um, applicable to, to, to all of them. So I'm just saying that the trespass against the word antinatalism has been committed by people who want to steal the word. And want to steal it to talk about population control or some other bullshit that has nothing to do with being anti-natalism. All right, they're unnatalists, and they want to talk about some sort of modified unnatalism. Well, th so that's that. That's the problem. But I mean, yeah, the the, the only reason why the word ethelism exists is because of this perversion of the word antinatalism, the anti part, and um, the um, apparent inability for some people to recognize that um, humans aren't um, God made that they are in fact animals that without their culture and education they're dumb animals <laughs> okay they're stupid fucking ugly butt ugly animals um, and and uh, that um, 
like many other animals, like most all mammals anyway, um, they don't have magic capacities. They have mammal capacities to feel and to suffer. And that um, this is about sentient life, not human life. Um, yeah, so that's the difference. Um, that a person could be one of those, but or both or none. Well, again, um, this, is, this is only exists because people won't leave words alone. They want to pervert their meaning. And unfortunately, the word antinatalism is too many syllables, and so people make it mean too many different things. So that's the only problem with that word. Um, the definitions are pretty clear to me, at least. Yeah, well, uh, I, I shudder to think what you, how you define these words. Um, but the, the, the distinction for ethelism is, is that it's sentient life-focused, and it's anti future generations and you do that through yes preventing natalism where possible but there's going to be circumstances where just preventing natalism isn't going to get the job done that sterilizing the future is going to probably require more than voluntary choices not to natal or some manufactured mechanism that will prevent natalling. Um, it's not really practical to think that we can put condoms on all the insects. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so anyway, our barriers, barrier methods. <laughs> yeah, the barriers for coral reefs. Good luck with that one. Well, they're not sentient, but still, you know, the danger exists. Um, so anyway. You don't want to get into a huge thing here with these people. It's just, you know, it's disappointing. Uh, so Samari says, I think the distinction can be made between progression of societal standards of non-reproduction and withdrawing life from those who are here, um, wanting to remain until the end their own way. Yeah, well, again, if, if they're going to just, if that's, if that's all they're going to do, that would be fine. But that's not how they're built into a system that's not doing that. They're subsidizing Dr. Frankenstein's castle in a way. All right, so if they could, if, if, if their guarantee was, yeah, we're going to burn the castle down before we die, <laughs> you know, then okay, you could trust them. But you can't trust them if they're not going to do that. If they're not going to ensure that the, the, the monster creation stops, um, then yeah, the, the, you've got that, the, the first priority has got to be to, to close the door. To, to close the door to harm. And if you're not getting the door closed, then you're not doing anything, theoretically. You're, not, you're just not going to get it done. Um, that is what holds people back from ethelism. Well, I mean, what holds them back is, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, <sighs> you know, again, is their inability to see sentience as the real issue because they're human-centric. Um, and um, I, 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 it's it just you can't make the choice for others. I mean, how can you know? There's just no point. Um, again, uh, n people don't not rape themselves. I mean, you know, they, they don't stop the crime by not committing the crime. That doesn't get the job done. All right, so. It's just stupid for, as, as again, we're back to this argument, but, you know, doesn't do the Frankenstein monsters any good to kill themselves if new monsters keep rolling out of the castle. So this is sort of just bullshit. There's only one choice, and that is you stop the doctor. And um, based on the absence of reasonable argumentation, um, that can undo any of the facts that the philosophy is based on. Um, there's every reason to um, act when there's any chance, you know, to get the job done. So if there's a button that happens that blinks only once a time in a million years, the button turns on for 30 seconds and it's sitting in front of me, yeah, I'm hitting the button. It's, it's the only rational thing to do because there's absolutely no 
um, solid, um, controllable, uh, reasonable expectation even. There's no reasonable expectation um, that of all the possible permutations of a future that um, victory for the anti-natalist philosophy in time to save a massive amount of suffering is going to come. And then there would still be the immediate argument that even even the suffering I could, could prevent in the next 10 years would would um, justify hitting the red button. Just 10 years of suffering would justify it. Because it's all imposed. It's torment and torture imposed for, for frivolous, silly, um, unreasonable, um, unauthoritative, unqualified reasons. It's pretty plain and simple. Retarded, infantile, um, non -co incoherent. People can't even coherently explain what the fuck they're doing when they have kids. <laughs> they don't have any coherent explanation of what they're, they intend to accomplish outside the scope of, you know, uh, I want something to unconditionally love me or some other kind of crap. Uh, it's an expression of my love for my husband or some other bullshit. And you're like, what the, pff what is that mush? Come on. You're going to impose on something based on that shit? Come on. So anyway. So just as there are, so to do a feta, <laughs> you know, just as there are pussy atheists, there are pussy antinatalists. And that's all it comes down to. There's people who get the job done and people who sit around talking and never doing. Um, yeah, so we can just do, we'll do, we'll, we'll straw men them with the same argument. Um, there's talkers and there's doers. Blah, blah, blah. There's succeeders and there's failures. <laughs> yeah. And success is you're gonna, you're gonna. There's just no way you're not gonna break an egg to win this war. You're gonna have to break an egg or two. Yeah. So anyway, enough of the video.